I'm Ryan Thomas, and you've been listening to the new 8DO Warm Studio Solo Clarinet, which is a deep sampled solo clarinet library with over 20 different articulations, uh, including just a truly beautiful legato. And in this video, we are just going to explore the instrument. Uh, I'm gonna kind of take you through the interface and the various patches that you can load. And then we're just gonna demo all the articulations uh, so that you can hear each one at least once. And then we just have a couple musical examples that are going to show you those articulations in action. Action. So this is a really fun library. It's really close to my heart because I'm actually a woodwind player myself and I'm very picky with my woodwinds and I was just really really impressed when I started uh, playing around with this library. Uh, I hope you like it. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. So 8DO has made things nice and easy. Uh, you've got these two main patches here that are going to pull up either a prearranged articulation set that uh, just gives you a key switch patch that is already preloaded with some of the more common articulations that you tend to use in writing for clarinet. Uh, or you can just pull up a totally empty key switch patch and start from scratch. In either case, all you have to do to populate the slot or to replace an articulation that's already there is just double click on the slot and then choose from uh, any of these articulations here in these four categories. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the key switches or maybe you want to save the RAM, you can just load up one of the individual patches. All of the articulations that are in those key switch patches are available individually in all of these patches here. So aside from that, the interface is just very clean. It's very easy to use. You've got the, let me go ahead and load up a legato patch here. Yeah, there we go. So you've got the dynamics and the expression. And I feel like all of these controls are fairly self-explanatory. And in the instrument panel here, you've got a basic volume control. You've got the basic pan control here, and then you've just got the mic position knob. And all the way to the left is going to be 100% close mic, all the way to the right is 100% room mic, and uh, in between is just gonna be a mix of the two. So in all of the musical examples that you are going to hear, I actually have the mic position set uh, almost to the middle, but airing just a little bit towards the close mic. Uh, just because with woodwinds, even in an orchestral context, I actually find myself using those close mics more and more to provide definition to the woodwinds and kind of help them uh, speak through a mix. And the beautiful thing about this series of libraries is that they, yes, they're totally brilliant uh, in a very intimate uh, studio context. They also work really well, even, even in a, a fairly large orchestral context, just because, you know, again, even with other strictly orchestral woodwind libraries, I find myself tending to use more of the close mics uh, than maybe with the other instrument groups like brass and strings. So let's go ahead and just start demoing these articulations. We're gonna start off in the traditional category and just work our way down. And we're just gonna start with the staccato here. And the staccato is gonna give you a nice attack and just a little bit of a release. And Staccatissimo is also going to give you a nice attack and a very short release. Now, Staccatissimo 2 is obviously like Staccatissimo, but instead of giving you a ta, 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 it's going to give you a ta, ta, ta. So the player is actually clipping the end of the note with their tongue. And Marcato is also gonna give you a nice attack, but also a very long release. Now these sustains are of course just going to be your sustains and they are not velocity sensitive. You are going to affect the dynamics with the mod wheel. And I always like to link the dynamics and the expression because it just gives you more emotion.
and the vibrato sustains are just going to be sustains with vibrato. And this is going to be the legato. Just beautiful. And this is the whole note trill. This is the half note trill. Very scary. Now let's move on to the arcs, and these are just going to be swells that are created by the player rather than crossfading between different dynamics layers using uh, the mod wheel. So these are the short arcs. These are the medium arcs. And these are the long arcs. So delicate, so beautiful, I love the arcs. And let's move on to the performance articulations. And these are basically going to be your phrases. And we're gonna start with the measured tremolo. So these are actually tempo synced. And you can control the dynamics with the mod wheel with these. And these are the tuplets, and these are velocity sensitive. Uh, these are the triplets. And these are the da da's.
Now let's explore some of the effects. And we're gonna start off with the flutter tongue. And these are the scoops, and these are a ton of fun. You'll hear these in one of the musical examples, and uh, it just adds a ton of color to your writing. And these are the slow descending runs playing a fifth. These are the slow descending runs playing an octave. These are the slow ascending octave runs. These are the fast descending runs playing an octave. And finally, these are the fast ascending runs playing an octave. So now that you've heard all the articulations, uh, let's check out some of these musical examples that show you how you can mix and match them to uh, produce some compositions here. So this first one is mostly gonna be making use of the legato and some of the shorts, but you've got a couple bends in there, you've got a trill. So let's go ahead and just give it a listen. That legato to me is just stunning. Uh, it's so nimble. There really isn't anything that you can't do with it. And I wanna go ahead and talk about a technique that I found to be really useful when working with this library. And it essentially involves having what I'm gonna call a legato trigger preceding a short note if you are coming from a legato note. So I'll go ahead and show you what I mean here. Uh, at the beginning of this piece, we're starting off with a legato note and it is going into a series of shorts, but in order to get up to that first short note, I wanted a little bit of a slur. So what I did was I triggered the short note right here, and this note is just gonna be a really, really, really short legato note that essentially is only going to give you that slur, and then it's gonna cut off, and then you're gonna hear that staccatissimo. So it sounds like this. And again as opposed to if I delete this legato trigger, you don't get quite the same effect. And uh, this is just a really great technique, I think, to maximize uh, realism. Now let's check out this other example here, and uh, it's a little bit jazzier. And finally, I did just wanna show you the different sounds that you can achieve with the different mic positions. So I'm just gonna play this first excerpt again. So I'm gonna start with just the close mic, and then by the end of the piece, you are just going to be hearing the room mic. So it's just a massively versatile library, does really well in an orchestral context, does really well in an intimate studio context, and all the articulations just give you so much freedom. So that is gonna do it for the walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, got some useful information out of it. And thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.